pooping in the candlelight. Learn about science. Pooping in the candlelight. Learn about ghosts. Learning about pseudoscience and the Loch Ness monster. All while pooping in the dark. Welcome to another episode of Pooping in the Dark. Uh, as as before, the lights out in my house, so I'm pooping in the dark, and I'm reviewing my next book. Um, my next book was recommended to me by a friend who said that after he read it, he was lying in bed, finished the last chapter, threw the book across the wall, and just sat and thought for an hour, and I thought, I need to read that shit. So I did. The book is called, the book is called Cloud Atlas by David Mitchell. Now, uh, this book is, uh, I don't know if it's unique, I, I haven't come across it, but it's laid out in a format um, that's similar to Russian nesting dolls, I guess, would be the closest analogy. It starts off early 19th century uh, boating expedition missionary work thing in the, in the Pacific in the form of a diary and then it jumps ahead and that diary is being read by someone in England in the turn of the 20th century in the form of a diary entry which is being read by a, a journalist in the 1970s whose life is uh, turning into a movie, I don't know, but basically every story is in a format that's read by the next set of characters, the next character in a future point in time. Uh, so, so not only does it do that, you know, it goes to the, from uh, the past all the way to the the future most uh, uh, story arc, and that's right in the middle. So it's it's very much mirrored. So then we go backwards, and then we we wrap up. And that's what's, you know, so unique about it, and I don't feel too bad uh, explaining some of the, the plots, because it's really not so much about the plot, I guess, what I would say the main point of the book is about the human's will to power and subjugation and stuff like that. Um, and I can, uh, so, I mean, it's, it's very well written. I am particularly not biased against, uh, the second uh, stories, the, sorry, the second section, because uh, it's from the point of view of a composer, and I think Mr. Mitchell's trying a little bit too hard to make it seem like it's a composer writing it. So, like every other analogy by this character is, you know, a music analogy, and it's just like makes me want to puke. You know, I if I could find an example. I would, but I won't, but, you know, the, the, the women walked across the street like the staccato bass lines of Pitt's bass, and I'm like, shut the fuck up. But, I don't want that, that's the that's literally the only bad thing I can think of about this book. Um, but, what I really uh, commend the author for doing is something that's uh, is hard to do, and is easy to do bad, and strunk and white, you know, that... Uh, Usage dictionary is, is one of the, one of the main rules is don't do this unless you're really really good and what this is is speaking in dialect and the most the future most story is in a made up dialect no less so it's it's even harder but I think he pulls it off like let me let me just read a passage one steam and dawn I done the milk and cost sussy was sluggy bed and sick when our guest asked to come herding the goats with me Ma said yeah of course I didn't say yay yeah. I said I cool some in stony kind of has a weird, uh, I don't know, like, Trinidad meets Australian meets, I don't even know, um, but doing that kind of, uh, writing, is, it's very easy for me as a reader to want to shoot myself, but I didn't, I got through it. Um, the other cool thing, uh, something that, uh, David Foster Wallace did in Infinite Jest is that what I would consider the, uh, climax of the book to be isn't written. It's You have to do some detective work, not nearly as much as you have to do in Infinite Jest, but uh, you do have to kind of infer from uh, from the circumstances in between the second to last and the last story is sort of this, the, uh, you know, you have to assume what's what happened, and it's kind of a big deal. And it's super cool, and I liked it, and everyone should read it. Uh, David Mitchell is a British author, and I bought this um, book from the country of Britain, um, 
so it took a while, and but I read it and it was worth it. That's it. Thanks. Thanks.